good uh, vice president for her, please take your seats, for her uh, very kind introduction. Uh, if you, parang nabalik ako dun sa kampanya, nandun kami dalawa ni Inday Sara nagbubungis-ngisan ulit. And the reason I made her, pinapat, uh, I made her laugh is that I told her, dito sa mga gulong nangyayari, I have just officially designated myself as your self-appointed official BFF. So, kahit sorry na lang, sayot mo sa gusto mo, I'm still your number one fan. Magandang araw mga kaibigan. Ito, napakagandang pangyayari. Uh, despite sa nangyaring kaguluhan sa politika, lalo na dyan sa House of Representatives, na kung saan uh, nagkalamat ang relasyon ni PGMA and Sara, BP and Sara versus Speaker Romualdez. Ito ngayon, uh, sa isang official gathering sa Cebu uh, the other day, Nako, ang ating Pangulo at ang ating Bisi Pangulo, pinakita nila ang kanilang unity nagkakaisa na kung saan uh, with all sincerity, binanggit ng Pangulo na he is designating himself as uh, the number one fan of BP Inday Sara. Wow, what a show of uh, ano, yung pagkakaisa. So dito, Uh, sana naayos na ang sigalop kasi nandun din si Speaker uh, Martin Romualdez uh, after yung seremonya sa Cebu, yung launching ata sa pier, nag-usap yung tatlo. I hope na ayos na ang sigalop uh, with the leadership of the President. Uh, sana makinig na sa kanya si VP Inday Sara at si Speaker Romaldes para water under the bridge na itong nangyari sa house leadership. So, ulitin ko, napakagandang sinyalis ito sa ati, sa leadership sa ating bansa na nagkakaisa ang Pangulo at ang BC Pangulo. Panoorin natin ang uh, speech ng uh, Pangulo doon sa seremonya sa Cebu. Thank you very much. Uh to our good uh, Vice President for her, please take your seats, for her uh, very kind introduction. Uh, if you, parang nabalik ako dun sa kampanya, nandun kami dalawa ni Inday Sara nagbubungis-ngisan ulit. And the reason I made her, pinapat, uh, I made her laugh is that I told her, dito sa mga gulong nangyayari, I have just officially designated myself as your self-appointed official BFF. So, kahit sorry na lang, sayot mo sa gusto mo, I'm still your number one fan. Our uh, good speaker, Speaker uh, Martin Romualdez, and of course, uh, the tourism, our tourism secretary, uh, Secretary uh, Sina Frasco, the Transportation Secretary uh, Jimmy Bautista, the Cebu 5th District Representative, of course, uh, Duke Frasco, the Cebu City Governor, our good friend, Governor uh, Gwen Garcia, the Liloan Municipal Mayor, Aljo Frasco, the Top Line Group of Companies President and CEO, Eugene Eric uh, Lim, Fellow workers in government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Maayong hapon sa inyong tanang. Today I stand together with the people of Liloan for two very significant and important reasons. We witness today the grand launching of Pier 88, which shall offer a faster transport alternative for passengers and for cargo, and holds promise to become a local economic hub. It shall immensely serve the interests of the people of Liloan and beyond. It's made more special since it coincides with the 178th anniversary of Liloan, 
with the Rusquillos Festival, which is named after the native delicacy which Liloan has been known for decades. In a sense, this is also a grand relaunching of the Rusquillos Festival after a three-year hiatus due to the pandemic. With the public health emergency having been declared no longer an emergency, and uh, not one, no longer one of international concern, we can now resume the traditional festivities and we can now resume the work that we had begun for all the development around our country now in Cebu, in Liloan. It's encouraging to see that uh, the massive undertaking such as a massive undertaking such as this, where the local government takes the lead and collaborates with the private sector and other LGUs in the pursuit of objectives con consonant with the national development agenda. If we notice co cohesive features, it can be seen that several public services and developmental goals are delivered and achieved all at the same time. Public, public infrastructure, transport, development, road traffic, decongestion. But there is a, the, the governor uh, hit the nail upon the head when she said that these are just parts of a bigger system that we will synchronize and put together. It, at the face of it, for example, we have now this Pier 88, we now have a ferry service, we talk about Camotes Island, and we think, of course, that is going to be good for Liloan, it's going to be good for Camotes, but uh, it doesn't end there. Uh, the, the concept that as ASEAN leaders have been talking about so as to develop the economies of the ASEAN member states is a concept of connectivity. We have used the, con the, the word connectivity merely to describe digital connectivity. We have now extended the meaning of that connectivity to include not only digital connectivity, but also to include connectivity in terms of land and sea and air transport. And this is what that provides. We talk, we have seen, all of us have seen, all the problems with supply chain networks. And that is why we have focused, all of us have focused on making that connectivity more smooth and more streamlined and more accessible and easier to use and therefore making the ease of doing business a, uh, not such a difficult uh, uh, effort for those, uh, those who would like to do business in, uh, any, in any way whatsoever. And so this is, for example, here in this, uh, uh, in, in, this exact, uh, in this example that we have here before us, the, we talk about the, 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 the uh, uh, tourism industry, which will be improved by that. But this is not just the tourism for Liloan, for Cebu, for Camotes Island. This is in consonance with the discussions that we have been making with other countries, especially around ASEAN, even including all, all the way up to Europe, in that uh, we are going to work together so that to increase our tourism volume. And this is, the, again, it may seem uh, as just one single part. It is, a, it is a, a, a very good development, but we must think of it in terms of not only this single port that we are looking at here now, but as part of a larger system, a larger network, which will make it easier for not only Fili for Filipinos to get from one place to another, or Filipinos to be able to do business, to open up areas that do not have economic activity as of now. I mean, if you think about it, the first time I went to Camotes Island, there was uh, there were really no resorts, there were really no, no developments there, and now slowly that has begun, and this will just accelerate uh, that accelerate that process. And it is part of that network which we are trying to put together for the entire country to also accelerate the economic activity in those other places. And so this is, this is why today is very important because today we put in place a very important piece of that puzzle. That puzzle that we are trying to put together so that our uh, our connectivity 
not only amongst the islands of the Philippines, but even amongst our international friends and visitors and tourists, is uh, strengthened and made more easy and made more accessible. These are the important aspects that uh, we have to attend to if we are going to transform our economy into the post-pandemic economy. So there is much that we, that we will achieve. There are activities of tourism, job generation, energy efficiency, sustainability. I was uh, in Cebu City three months ago for the groundbreaking of the Cebu Bus Rapid Transit System. Transportation and demand, because more connectivity. And that, again, is what we have been pushing for. It's another, that is another project that is likewise guaranteed to uh, gear these small, to, to, to help us achieve these multiple objectives. With the many, many benefits to the public interest, these projects showcase kindred examples of good urban planning. Let us imagine if these kinds of projects are replicated across the country, laterally and locally coordinated, and harmonized both on the provincial and national levels, then we could say that we are genuinely closer to our ambition of a prosperous, inclusive, and resilient society. Hence, we highlight the essential importance of holistic, systematic, and integrated planning in our, in our country today, as we slowly but collectively tread along that path. In Japan, this urban planning concept is known as machizukuri. In the literal sense, it means town planning. But in the essence that the concept carries, there is a more weighty and more profound idea behind it, such as the primacy of the national framework, the evolution of local planning powers to local governments, the importance of data, and community participation. Our response to this is what we have come to call the whole of government approach. When we are confronted with challenges, or when we have a program that we would like to achieve, we apply all the resources, all the capacities, all the abilities of the bureaucracy of government, and no matter what department they are, what, no matter what agency they might be, they are all applied to solve that problem. And that includes the coordination between the national government and the local government. It is the only way, in my view, that I see that we can succeed both at the local level and at the national level. So we, we laud the efforts, not only of Liloan, but of course of Cebu province, to the coordinative efforts of the Metropolitan Cebu Development and, Co Deve and Coordinating Board to put in their pursuit of good urban planning and development practices. The vision of Mega Cebu by 2050 is already in place. This is actively being pursued as we speak. As an island province with several cities and municipalities, Cebu stands to greatly benefit from a systematic and integrated planning. Such kind of strategic planning will serve to further solidify its urban development foundation and consolidate its socioeconomic strength. It will be a boon not only for Cebu, but for the rest of the country. And uh, again, we have to remark that uh, like in many, as in many other forward-looking programs, Cebu once again leads the way. Cebu once again shows the way for the rest of the Philippines. Cebu will be our, Cebu, we will be watching the uh, success of uh, all of these coordinated efforts that we are doing with Cebu. And again, we will use those examples around the country. But now allow me to uh, reiterate the urgency of enacting a land use policy for our country, which is a priority legislative agenda of this administration. I have had the opportunity to work on this matter when I chair the Senate Urban Planning, Housing and Resettlement uh, Committee some years ago. It never materialized for reasons beyond our control. The pandemic is also included in that, uh, uh, in that circumstance. This time, we will see to it that this measure shall be given urgent attention that it deserves. 
cognizant of its fundamental importance to our holistic national development. Through a physical framework plan, all mandates and policies on land use shall be integrated from watersheds to farmlands, from cultural heritage sites to ancestral domains, from protected disaster-prone areas. Local governments must ensure that their respective physical and land use plans shall conform to and shall be consistent with the national plan, hence the whole of government approach. Moreover, national and local governments will tap the budding profession of environmental planners for its technical expertise in the crafting of accurate and well-aligned physical and land use plans. I thank the House of Representatives uh, for its timely and significant action in having approved this, their version of the bill on third reading just a few days ago. It is uh, terribly important. I have been uh, uh, following this in, uh, from the time that I was governor to the time that I was congressman until the time I was senator, and I continue to do so now as president. And so I exhort the local government of Lilon, the whole of Cebu, to continue generating these kind of high impact projects and give us once again examples of best practices. May your examples be a source of inspiration and ideas for others to emulate, to follow, and to succeed with. Let me congratulate, of course, our private sector partners whose ideas and investments have led to the completion of the sport and mixed-use development project, Pier 88 Ventures Incorporated, and top-line group of companies. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your help. And thank you for providing this service for our people. Rest assured, my administration will continue to encourage and nurture these dynamic collaborations between highly capacitated LGUs and the private sector. All of us look forward to the full blast operations of Pier 88 very, very soon. Happy anniversary and enjoyable Rosquillos Festival to one and all. Mabuhay ang Liloan at ang buong lalawigan ng Cebu. Daghang salamat sa inyong tanang.